host for this first episode of Future Fridays. And today I'm with Abhinit, Senior Vice President, Business Intelligence Solutions at RateGain. Hi, Abhinit. How are you? Hi, Christiani. Doing very well. How are you? Very good as well. Thank you so much. Before we start uh, this discussion, can you just tell us a little bit about your role in RateGain? Absolutely, Krishani. So I uh, I look after the business intelligence products at Rate Gain for our hospitality and OTA division. Essentially, in this uh, uh, product vertical, we have products that help our customers uh, understand market de demand, uh, understand the pricing of their competition, uh, manage rate parity across different channels, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I look after the business intelligence products. Great. So. Today, Abhinit, uh, we've come together to speak um, in this series that is called Future Friday about um, some of the new challenges in the hospitality industry. One of the things that comes up a lot uh, in, in my conversations with customers is that the historical trends, um, they are no longer reliable in, in forecasting demand. So this leads to a certain uncertainty. How can revenue managers kind of um, uh, know what kind of demand will be coming into the market? How is that changing revenue management overall? It's kind of hard to predict how many bookings will come in, uh, how, much, how many people will travel, who will travel, et cetera. So have you heard about these challenges um, from your customers as well and, and uh, the industry in general? No, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the way I would like to answer that, Christiani, is a pre-COVID world and a post-COVID world, because obviously a lot of things have changed post-COVID. In a pre-COVID world, revenue management uh, already had started evolving themselves. So over the last decades, revenue managers have a lot more data points now these days to take any action that they have to take. But after COVID, uh, after COVID uh, which I would call like a black swan event, everything on the revenue management side changed. Because not only one needed to understand the future demand uh, to plan their pricing, but demand forecasting became like a boardroom conversation. Even CFOs, CEOs, CXOs, everyone wanted to know what the future would look like because they had to do a lot of manpower planning. They had to do marketing planning around that. They had to do cost optimizations and so on and so forth. So we realized that there is, there is a, a whole new focus on finding out what the future demand would look like and and we uh, the first thing that we do when we have a hypothesis is, is we go to our customers we spoke to about 45 customers across different segments that we operate in including hospitality travel airline car rentals and what we realized was almost 90 percent of them said that the traditional ways of running demand forecasting is not working and that's when we realized that this is a big pain point that someone like us uh, should work upon and help our clients with and, and why is this? Why is it that data is not reliable anymore and, and this old way of working doesn't work anymore for these companies? Again, interestingly enough, uh, you know, there is a pre-COVID world and a post-COVID world. Now, in a, in a pre-COVID world, you know, uh, making demand predictions were relatively easy because you had a trend from past, which was a big guidance for what the future would look like. So what happened last year? What was the impact of seasonality? What was the impact of a certain business event? Uh, what was the impact of holidays on the demand? What is the current business on books looking like for future? So reliably, relying a lot on historical indicators was how forward-looking demand prediction was made. But if I were to ask you, Christiani, today, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you uh, have to make a future or a, uh, or a travel as a consumer? What would your answer be? Yeah, no idea. I mean, even no idea where to go, uh, what is open, what is closed. Uh, is there any restrictions in place? Is it safe to travel? Right. Exactly. All these kind of questions would come up. And I think um, you can't just go wherever you want. Right. It's um, you have to do some research before before you can go anywhere. Exactly. And that's what that's what we heard from those 45 customers. The travel, at least in the next few years is going to be driven a lot by completely new kind of, you know, uh, demand indicators. And that includes a lot of things around COVID, you know, whether it's news, whether it's policy response, whether it's vaccination, but it also include, you know, things on a macroeconomic level. So how are airlines planning, you know, setting up their schedules in a post-COVID world? How are hotels responding? Are hotels even 
available for booking or 40% or 30% of them are shut as some reports say so we realized that one needs to you know look into a lot of forward looking demand indicators so the first problem with the traditional forecasting was that it was completely dependent on bottom of the funnel data and we had to move up the funnel the second the second problem that we realized while we were speaking speaking to the customers were they were looking at some of the future trends so we have customers who look into airline search or we have customers who look into events data for example uh, to understand what future demand would look like but what we've realized post covid is you know even searches are not a good proxy because people might end up searching but they might not end up booking because you know things can change overnight people might end up booking but they might not travel and do cancellation because you know things are changing so dynamically and so we realized even some of our customers who had started looking at these let's say more forward looking indicators were not being able to you know get the right uh, value and the last thing is you know we realized that some people some 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 people in the industry they made some change so i, I know quite a few of our customers and a, quite a few of our players who 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 moved their forecasting who started looking at more short term forecasting to predict future and try different experiments but the point is most of those experiments are not conclusive because if an omicron wave happens in the first week of december as early as second week of december the whole world shuts uh, so things started moving so dynamically and that's when we realized we need more data as as an industry we need more data we need more intelligence and then we need more sophisticated algorithms to process that data and intelligence to give what the future would look like and that's where we really started working on this too then how do you do this you said the the historical trends they are no no longer uh, so relevant then the future data even you said the future data some of them are uncertain so how do you um do that with a demand forecast then oh, how, how how is your model different from from just like search data or something like this that that as you say they could search and not book or they could book and cancel so how do you know then the demand yeah you know and so this is pretty much you know where the secret sauce of demand ai lies so first of all uh, any forecasting model leave aside forecasting any ai ml based solution uh, we say it's as good as the data that powers that and so for us the first and the most important thing was to go and aggregate all kinds of important data points that would feed into a model like this so for that we worked on on a two pronged approach the first one was to build partnerships to source a lot of data that's not with us so things like you know how covid uh, vaccination trends are or how covid cases are panning out or uh, what people are searching on google what how holidays and events agencies are stacking up their events how airlines are planning their capacity we had to source a lot of this data uh, and we relied a lot on our partnerships but most importantly for us uh, and which is our secret sauce was happened was that we also started using a lot of proprietary data that gives quite a bit of weightage to you know uh, to this model uh, and those i can largely define as three buckets so first of all we we are one of the largest distribution players in the hospitality space we work with more than 160000 hotels helping them you know uh, distribute their inventory across different demand channels and drive almost close to 40 million bookings on an annual basis so that gave us a good understanding of what people are booking uh, where are they booking from where are they going to and not just booking what they are actually searching because almost 150 billion plus consumer searches originate on our distribution platforms so that's a very good Uh, and a very deep layer of intelligence that comes from distribution the second one is rate shopping uh, across seven different industry segments that we operate within travel we shop close to 240 billion plus price points and that gives us a good understanding of how airline rates are changing how car rental rates are changing how hotels are changing their rates and all that intelligence is a good indicator of what the future demand would look like and lastly but not the least we created a proprietary model internally that helps customers understand how much for forward looking airline travelers would come into a certain destination and that again uh, helps fine tune the model so all in all the first step was to get quality data and the most wide canvas of data which we did and most of it 
because of the entirety and the width of the canvas, we feel we are the best place in the industry to do that. The second thing obviously was to invest a lot in data sciences and machine learning to process that data because one can get all the great data, but as long as they don't have a very sophisticated layer of uh, algorithms running it, uh, you can't really make sense out of it, right? And that's, you know, almost half of our data science team started working on crunching this data and, and seeing how we can drive high levels of accuracy uh, towards it. And the third and the most important thing was benchmarking it with actual reports uh, coming, uh, you know, out from outside and then fine tuning the models on itself. So right now what happens is on a weekly basis, the model self learns itself. It takes data from our distribution platform to see whatever demand we predicted, did it actually happen or not? And we get to know that because we have a distribution platform. And then accordingly, the model self learns, heals itself and, and, and starts uh, making more accurate predictions. So all in all, a lot of, a lot of streamlining, a lot of work on data aggregation, a lot of work on training the models over a period of nine to 12 months happened before we launched it. And, and now, and now we are, we are seeing some very good results that our customers, uh, you know, are talking about it. And so, and so we feel that, you know, we have really, we have really uh, uh, done a good job on this. Really impressive. One last question, and then I think we have to leave the rest for the next um, series, for the next um, session. Um, do you think that there will be an, after, uh, once we get out of the COVID and over the pandemic, do you think there will still be a need for this kind of solution of the future looking data? Uh, yeah, you know, Christiani, that's a very good question. Um, no, I, I think there are there are there are some lasting impacts on any uh, big macro event uh, that happens in a certain industry. And from our perspective, what we believe is absolutely till the time pandemic is, uh, you know, situation is so dynamic that you would need a lot of data from different points to you know make accurate demand predictions. But what we've realized, and this is this is actually coming from our clients, is once we started giving these data points to our customers, they realized that even if there is no pandemic or there is no uncertainty, looking into things like, you know, how airline is planning their capacity, how many travelers are coming from different destinations, what is driving a certain length of stay pattern in my geography, are people traveling solo couple or family, uh, how are events getting set up, are some events going to actually even happen or most of them are going to move into a virtual scenario. So we feel a lot of these, these data parameters, now customers have gotten hooked onto that. So yes, pandemic might not remain, and I hope it won't in a few years from now, but looking into all these new kinds of data points to make predictions for future, I think that's a lasting impact that something yeah. like the pandemic has done. And that's why we feel that, you know, fundamentally the game of demand forecasting has changed through this black swan yeah. event called COVID. And we feel that, you know, some of those things, you know, will stay relevant even hmm. you know, for, for times beyond. And, and one last point, just to add, COVID obviously was a very big uncertainty led event that happened in the world. But as in, as, as in we, as, as, as we see the world progressing, there are many, many such uncertainty events that, you know, one needs to be prepared for. We are seeing a lot of climatic changes happening. We are unfortunate incidents like terrorism, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. So we feel that uncertainty is going to always remain, even if there is no pandemic. And one needs to, at that point of time, be proactive and not reactive. And so tools like these will become part of a regular technology stack is how we see. I think so too. Thank you so much, Abhinit. And let's discuss more details on demand forecasting and future trends in our next session next week. Thank you so much, Christiani. It was a pleasure to speak to you. Have a good day.